Okay, so here we are again with a uh, cigar review. So today we're going to talk about the Cigar Aficionado Cigar of the Year. The uh, Padron 1964 Anniversary uh, Torpedo. So we're going to compare it to a few others, so let's take a look. So those we're going to compare, and we're going to kind of look at the wrappers uh, of these. we got some Padrones here, we got a Davidoff, and we got a Rare Monte Cristo. But before we get into that, we'll uh, check out the, uh, the boots. Uh, today is an Alligator Belly from Hanson Exotics. So a really nice boot. If you want a, a classic uh, Alligator, much cheaper than some of the... The uh, more known brands like uh, Lucchese, but a very nice skin. Uh, they're located out of California. I think the boots are made in Texas. Uh, Hanson Exotics are those. And uh, a watch check. Uh, this is uh, just a, a Grail watch, I guess you'd call it, if I can focus in on it. Here, this is the uh, Grand Seiko SBGM221 uh, Grand Seiko. Uh, is just uh, phenomenal. Seiko's maybe pretty underrated, and uh, these are just uh, just a great, great watch. So, so here we go. Uh, later on, I may get into this. Was interesting. Uh, the Davidoff, um, one of their uh, promos had a passport, and uh, they go through a bunch of different uh, cigar types and and um, blends. But it also gives a pretty good, helpful idea for a review. So I may. Throw that over here, and then we'll talk about that once I uh, light up the cigar. But So, the uh, Cigar of the Year. Let's focus in a little more here. Um, I'd like you to see the contrast in the wrappers. So, the Cigar of the Year is this one right here. This is the Torpedo 64 Anniversary. Now, I have to give it a caveat. This is the Maduro. And all of these are, in essence, Maduro, darker wrappers. The Cigar of the Year, I think, was in the natural. And uh, my friend did not have any left at the cigar shop. So there is somewhat of a difference in the wrapper. Although I often prefer a darker wrapper in the Padrones. Actually, I think the natural has a better taste. But, you know, if we look at sort of two of the the best Padrones ever made, I would say. Uh, let me put them side by side here. So we've got uh, just some of the differences um, in the Padrones. So two of the best are the 40-year anniversary and this 50-year anniversary. And you can see those wrappers look pretty darn similar. And then you get to a, um, a standard Padrone here. This is... Uh, uh, the only difference in this series, this is sort of their, their uh, more economically friendly <laughs> series, is they're not aged as much. And you see the wrapper's got a little more open vein to it, uh, so maybe not the, the, the top of the line wrappers that the, the other ones have. And then you get to the comparison of these two uh, 64 models, again the Torpedo on the left is Cigar of the Year, but very similar blend. And if you compare the wrapper, it almost looks like in all three, in the 50, uh, the 40, and now the 64, pretty much looks to be about the same wrapper. And again, another 64 there. And you compare that to, um, of course, these have cellophane, so it gives a little different look. But this is um, a Davidoff. Anniversario number three, and this Monte Cristo BRM, a limited edition, and uh, those are a lighter, a lighter uh, wrapper, and I'll review those as we go. So, so let's uh, let's fire it up and see what we think about this uh, cigar of the year and what makes it so good. So first of all, uh, price wise, so this one as you can see, uh, twenty one thirty nine is the price point on this, which is uh, cheaper than all the other ones I've shown you there uh, earlier in the video, um, but still not a cheap cigar by, by any means. And uh, let's say hi to Jenny and uh, uh, Daisy over there. Um, 
you know, right away looking at this wrapper, I mean, it's a little, a little bumpy in some ways. Uh, you know, it's not a real smooth, the, um, the tip there of the torpedo. Um, so, you know, interesting, uh, the, the band is not real secure. Not that a lot of that matters, but for Cigar of the Year, you know. Uh, so, no flavor on uh, the wrapper before I light. And uh, you get, you know, a pretty good draw before you light. Um, it's not, there. there's some resistance, but you want some, uh, but not a ton. Um, really nice how it's rolled into the, uh, you know, the box press look. Draws good. Um, Smoke is uh, um, not, I wouldn't say heavy, but it's certainly not light. So it's about what you want. Some some cigars kind of smoke you out, and um, other ones you don't get much. This one's right in the middle, so I like that. Definitely got some oomph to it. I would say that... Uh, Nice, nice flavor profile. Um, I would say it's not as strong as the uh, 40th anniversary, which, which um, is is modeled similar to this with the torpedo, torpedo size. But you definitely get uh, a nice uh, flavor profile. So if I find what I did with my Davidoff booklet here. Well, first of all, looking at uh, what uh, Cigar Aficionado indicated. So this is uh, uh, a 97 rating, which is really high, really high. Um, I don't know. It is good. I don't know that I can say it's a 97. Not, not yet anyway, but uh, so far, really good. Um, they have the price point listed at 1780. So, I don't know, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, I guess that's maybe before some of the local tax. Um, it's a 6x52. They indicated that, um, you know, it was the first uh, manufacturer to be named Cigar of the Year in 2004 when Aficionado started the award. And it's basically... Um, it says Padron has occupied a place in the top five every year, but one for a total of 16 times. And I, I would agree with that, that Padron is, is uh, your most consistent uh, non-Cuban uh, cigar. I mean, Cubans are notoriously inconsistent, but, but I love the flavor of Cubans. Uh, but for a non-Cuban, Padron is probably the best. I, I, don't, I don't know that... Uh, Davidoff is really good, uh, but uh, Padron, there's just something about them. And so I, I certainly agree that they, they have a top five cigar every year. Uh, you know, this this was, uh, this year they were number one. So um, I personally like the 1926 series a little more than the 64, um, but, but they're all very good. And, and subtle, subtle distinctions. So, yeah, what, woody, nutty core, okay. I would say that's true. At the outset. Um, looking at some of these in the Davidoff book where they, they describe some of the flavors. You know, 
I'm not a big fan of pepper, and the Padrones have a little bit, a little bit of bite, but not much. Never, never overwhelming, but definitely have, have some. The pepper, the spice type of thing. Dogs are gonna go crazy. So we'll check back here as I get deeper into uh, the cigar. All right, so uh, burning through this, uh, maybe just a third or so in. Uh, knocked off the first ash. It was a perfect, perfect burn. Um, you know, very even, very consistent. Building up a little more of that spice. Really nice flavor, uh, that wood flavor. Um, dirt made it up. Earthiness comes out, it's very smooth. Uh, you can tell it's, it's uh, well aged. Um, it was really good with coffee. So it brings, coffee brings out the uh, flavor even more. As an element of a cocoa or deeper cream to it, like I said, coffee makes it uh, a really nice, nice smoke. Definitely um, full body. So I would say a strong cigar. Not as strong as the 40th. But, but strong. Um, yeah, hints of vanilla, malt. A little bit of leather. Uh, and, and certainly the coffee the taste comes out in there too. You can, you can really identify that. So, overall, uh, an excellent cigar. Um, I'm a little surprised at the 97 rating. You know, I said in the beginning that uh, I thought that was pretty high. I'm not sure. I mean, 97 would be like one of the best cigars ever. Certainly can't go wrong, uh, but I prefer the, uh, the 40th um, anniversary and uh, the 50 year, uh, the, the limited edition 50 year, the, the, the bigger stick that I showed you earlier. There's two different types of the 50. So uh, overall, no, no complaints. Um, I, uh, I think that Cigar of the Year, I have no issue with uh, that uh, ranking. Um, some of the other ones they have Listed here, uh, the Monte Cristo 35 series. I'll have to try that. Might have had one of those. Uh, um, I'll have to see. Maybe do a review on that. That was pretty good. Um, interesting that uh, San Cristobal, uh, the uh, Nicaraguan San Cristobal, is number three. I haven't had one of those in a long time. I, I typically stay away from the Cuban brands that are now non-Cuban. I think they, they they try to capitalize on their name more than the quality, but obviously that San Cristobal did really good. Um, the first true Cuban in, in the list, ranked number four is the Partagas Series D number four. And that... Uh, that's always a standby. That's a go-to for the Cubans. The uh, Partagas number four, Series D. Uh, it's a must-have if you go to Cuba. Number five, um, I don't know that. Oh, oh, the Casa Cuba. Yeah, yeah, Fuente. Uh, I agree. That's a great and an underrated cigar. I mean, 
Uh, go to your cigar shop, pick up a Casa Cuba from La Fuente. Fantastic cigar. Um, Dominican. Very good cigar. Number six, uh, the Illusion Cruzado Robusto. Um, yeah, I'll have to try it. I don't know. Sometimes on the Illusions, they're really good. Sometimes I find they can be a little inconsistent, too. Um, number seven. Yeah, Olivia, uh, Oliva, Series V, Milanio, Maduro, Churchill, yeah, yeah the uh, Milanio series was just fantastic. Uh, so I would agree that being in the top 10. Here's another Cuban, the Cohiba Siglo, Siglo 6, the uh, bigger, bigger Siglo, so those, those don't always make it, uh, it's a 5 by 7 Eights and a 52 ring gauge. So big Cuban Cubans are more famous for their smaller cigars. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, some people will say those Cohibas are overrated, but but you know, you may be smoking a fake if you think that because the real ones are really good. Um, Rocky Patel makes the list. All right, Grand Reserve or Busto. I've not had that. One. And. Number 10, ah, oh, the Fuente, oh, this is, uh, I have to find this one. This looks like it's difficult to find. Now, Rare Paint Vintage 60 Series Happy Ending. Not seen this one. Uh, new brand, Rare Pinks, huh. Proceeds from every box fund a worthy cause, it says. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in finding that one. So that's, that's number 10. So maybe we'll do a review down the road once I find some more of these. So anyway, double thumbs up for the uh, 64 Padron. Uh, we'll see you soon.